The following program is a Creative Magic Network production. Hey guys, December 3rd is the deadline to enter the contest to win Len Secretan's powerful book on inspiring leadership titled The Spark the flame and the torch inspire yourself, inspire others, inspire the world. And the best part, the book is in hardcover. That's right, hardcovers are hard to get these days. <laughs> so if you haven't already, you can enter the contest by going to frederickbuy.com. That's Frederick with a C, buy like buy.com and enter your email in the pop-up that will appear at the top of your screen. Have a great episode. You're listening to the Frederick Bai Show, where sky is the limit and space is the place. Here's your host, Frederick Bai. Alrighty, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, sit down, relax, put your earbuds on. Maybe you're doing the dishes, maybe you're running, maybe you're in bed. I don't know. Maybe whatever you're doing, welcome to the Frederick Bai Show. And this video podcast is about unleashing. Your creativity. We talk to experts. We step into the unknown. It is an inspirational, magical, intuitive radio podcast as we chat with charismatic enigmas. That's right. People, artists from around the globe, musicians, singers, radio hosts, business people, podcasters, everything in between. I am Frederick By, the man of the hour, the man with the power, too sweet to be sour. I'm funky like a monkey. I sting like a bee. I produce sweet honey. And I am pretty. I am your favorite French Knucker. And today, you know, I, I, today is going to be a very, very interesting show. And we have a very interesting, fascinating man. And the reason why I said is because all of you creative people out there, I know you. Okay. I know you. You can, you can, you can play me. You think, you know, that you believe, you believe in something higher because how does creative, how does creativity happen? Otherwise, you, there has to be something higher when you create, when you write, when you, uh, paint, you're in, you are connected to something, right? And today we have a man who is an atheist. And that's going to be a very interesting contrast that we're going to, we're going to talk about today. His name is David. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. He's a, he's the podcaster of Wayward Atheist, Atheist Podcast. And, uh, he began podcasting two years ago and he thinks that everyone should do it. It is like therapy to him. He's the father of two sons and believes that reality is better than fiction and reason is better than faith. Ooh, 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 that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> More, the truth. Is more important than how you feel, in his opinion, and uh, he takes a rational. He he believes in rationality, uh, and he, that's how he bases his. That's that's his approach to life, basically. How are you how are you doing today, Dave? I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. <laughs> I was when when you said atheist, I was expecting there to be a dun 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 behind it, <laughs> lightning bolts, thunder. Yeah, yeah. No, man. it. it it's it's good um yeah so go ahead fire away yeah sure sure no uh look you have an interesting uh story uh i know that now and you're doing a yep. lot of things man you're doing a lot of things during the you're doing the podcast you're also a renovation specialist that and, that's what i'm an entrepreneur in is, yeah. is renovations yeah 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 and uh your last name is dave edwards i didn't say it in, in the intro but all right so let's start at the beginning like I said, you're doing a lot of things. We're going to talk about the atheist versus the creative people versus the, the you know, something higher. But before that, give us an idea here of your background a little bit. Okay, well, my family immigrated to Canada in 1977 from the UK. I was uh, born the same year. I am Canadian. I'm first generation Canadian. They immigrated to Thunder Bay and uh, things kind of went sour for them after they, they got here and they they were divorced so life was a bit a bit shaky in the beginning um my mom being a single mom she went to university though during that time and uh you know things kind of seemed to get a bit better when she was going to university she got a degree in social work but then she got remarried and uh she got remarried to a really abusive person and that kind of really 
broke up our 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 family and um me and my siblings were out of the house at a at a very young age and uh I lived with my older sister from about the age of 12 uh, until I was 16 at that point she was murdered and um she was a prostitute she was murdered by a john and then I've been on my own my own since then um I was an atheist before any of this stuff happened. So before anybody gets any ideas thinking that, that uh, no wonder why he's an atheist. Why would he believe in anything because of that? No, I, I actually, I, my, my uh, grandfather was a Unitarian minister. So I was kind of raised around religion, not hardcore religion. Unitarians are, are Christian light. Um, but around the age of eight, I just, I just stopped believing in it. I like, like once I started thinking about it a little bit, none of it made sense to me. I didn't choose to be an atheist. I just, I just didn't believe it. There was no evidence for it. And um, yeah, you know how people say they, they they get a feeling when they're like like you were saying when you get a feeling for when you're writing something or or doing art that there's something else out there. I just never really had the feeling that something else was out there, and I don't and I don't think that like i don't think that you should always run on emotions or or feelings because i I think you should sit down and think about it first rationally uh formulate a plan and i kind of just on on what you were saying about about you know have being inspired by by a deity or a higher power whatever, whatever which way you put it i would say that when you're writing or when you are doing your art and you do something that is wonderful or you write an awesome story that was really creative and you're in your creative mojo own that power that's you doing that i I think you should own it be proud of it be proud of who you are and be proud of the fact that you're able to come up with something so creative you don't need to gift it to somebody else yeah Uh, okay okay that's one POV. That's one point of view, which is fine. We're going to, we're going to talk about that a little later. Um, Remember, this is only my opinion. Yeah, like, I, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. But, uh, okay. So, but l- l- let's, let's start at the beginning because not, now you're doing a podcast. You're, you're expressing yourself out there and your podcast, you talk about a lot of, you know, uh, p- hard stuff, you know, po- hard politics, stuff, politics, obviously, yeah. re- religion, LGBT, uh, free speech, blah, 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 free and, speech. and, and, yeah. You know, subjects that are up to date, subjects that up, are hard subjects. Up to date right? and hard especially, for most people to talk to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially today, you know, you have a lot to talk about, right? <laughs> In this time yeah. period, right? Okay, but yeah. now let, let, let's go back to your childhood a little bit. Okay, so okay. age of eight, uh, you know, you, you're, I mean, okay, your parents come to Canada. Uh, age of eight, you get this sense, this feeling that, hmm. No, I mean, maybe there's nothing, you know, there's nothing out there. Now you mentioned that your, your, your father was abusive. Um, yeah. And you, you mentioned about the, 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 the story of, about, about your sister. Now let me ask you this. Yeah. As an eight year old, because a lot of people can relate to that, right? As an yeah. eight year old, how do you, how did you deal with it? I mean, um, well, that's... when, when I did believe, like before the age of eight, when I, when I did believe, I, I, really believed because you know um as the son and grandson of of european immigrants belief system in the 70s was like there's still a church of england and you know so at this point it's 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 just taught to you at a young age you pray before you go to sleep and all that i found myself um crying uh, when, as a young child, like uh, my my uh, my grandfather died when I was very young, so I would find myself crying to to Jesus or to God, asking them not to take my my grandmother. So my memories of actually believing in in it aren't that great because for 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 me, if you if you <clears throat> and I, I didn't understand what it meant then I understand what it means now. But if you're going to give all the praise for the good things in the world to God, well, then you also have to give him all the bad things that happen as well. Because if he's all powerful, all knowing, then either he, he lets it happen or doesn't care that it happens. You know what I mean? So yeah. like I couldn't articulate it as an eight year old, but the major factor, and this is going to sound funny, funny as hell, the major factor in me 
not believing anymore when I was eight was I was like heavily into dinosaurs as a small child. I knew all their names. I had all the all like the rubber figures that they used to have back in the 80s and 70s. And I had a really good teacher. And she taught me about the timelines of, of uh, the periods of when they had lived. And I was already like not getting the feeling that everybody else said that they were getting from believing. So the teacher explained all this to me. And I was at my grandfather's Unitarian uh, church where he was a minister at. And they had a Sunday school teacher and she came in and she started teaching us that the earth was only 6,000, six to 10,000 years old and gave us the, the story of uh, Genesis and that. And I just, at that, at that moment, I, I believed the teacher more than I believed her. But and, I mean, I mean, that, I, 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 I mean, I'm asking like, how did you cope? How did you deal with an abusive? Oh, uh, how did, oh and, man. And, and, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, I thought you meant about the athe- atheism. And, um, and how did you, how did you come out of, you know, the murder of your sister? I mean, what's the story there? Sure. How did sure. You, sure. You know? Sure. Sure. Um, so I, I coped with it in the way that most kids, um, that are eight years old and don't have control of their hormones or their, their emotions. I acted out, I acted out in school. I, I stole things from stores. I just ran amok. Uh, I ended up in, in young offender facilities. Um, I never got addicted to drugs. Uh, luckily I, I easily could have ended up as, as one of them, anybody really can. But, um, so then I'm living with my sister, and at the same time, because it's not exactly a healthy, a healthy place to be living with, with, with a sex worker. In a, How old was she? Was she a lot older than um, you? She was four years older than me, mm-hmm. so not like a lot, a lot, but like o- older than me. So, and, and do you think that her behavior was due to the abuse also? Yeah. So my both of my sisters were sexually sexually abused multiple okay. times. So my my sister didn't have have a lot of self worth. Like she would uh, cut herself and a lot of depression, but it's understandable considering that, you know, three, three times before she was, you know, 13, 14, she had been sexually abused by three different men. So Mm. it wasn't, it's not that hard to figure out why she ended up where she was. So my mother had kicked her out and she was living with a, an older woman, not like older, older to her back then. So she would have been about 25, this woman. And my sister was, you know, 14 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, this woman was a prostitute and a John came over and she wasn't there and offered my sister money. And she was, you know, homeless at the time. So she, she took the opportunity and then kind of just, just never, never got out of, never got out of the lifestyle. Never really had a chance to get out of the lifestyle either. So, um, leading up to the, to, you know, just, just have a basic understanding of I'm getting in trouble. My sister's getting in trouble. I'm in and out of young offender facilities for committing mostly property crimes, but some assaults as well. Um, I, I get sentenced to a year for, for a crime. And while I'm in a young offenders facility is when she was actually murdered. So, Um, but during the, during the time, around the time that she was murdered, she had gotten involved with some politicians and, and a crown attorney. And, um, it's written about in a book. If people want to, want to read the book, it's called lawyers gone bad. You can find it on, on Amazon. Um, so it's, there's a chapter devoted to, uh, mostly to my sister. I'm, I'm in it as well, but, uh, yeah, so I, I get out and, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's crushing because she was really the only family member that I associated with at that time because I didn't speak to my mother and my, my my biological father had taken off when I was 12 and never called again. And my stepfather was a really lousy, uh, lousy drunk, just mean drunk. So yeah, I get out and, um, I can just go back to the same behaviors. I'm, uh, I'm seven, 16, 17 at this point, and I'm out for a little while, and then I got arrested again, and I got put back in. And uh, during that time, I thought I'm I'm not gonna not gonna do the same thing again when I get out. And I didn't really know how to change change my situation. So I thought if I just leave the situation, and I don't know anybody where I go 
then maybe you know I won't be as inclined to to get into some of the some of the situations that I was that I was in. I mean, it's kind of hard to be a drug dealer in a city where you don't know anybody. Mm-hmm. So so I got out and I I left and I never looked back. And during that time, I can't say that right away I was perfect. I still you know um, had some of my old routine and my old behaviors. But the one thing that changed is that I went out and got a job instead of trying to get money from proceeds of of the lifestyle that I had, that I'd once lived and slowly I went from job to job and then I got a skilled trade I locked into getting a, a skilled trade I didn't really go to go to trade school until after I had already started but somebody gave me an opportunity and uh, I was I've been working ever since and trying to live a, a good healthy lifestyle um, I have two sons now, uh, Rain and Parker. Parker's four, Rain is seven. He's severely aut- nonverbal autistic. So there's a lot of work that comes with that as well. Mm. And, uh, you know, as far as me and atheism and podcasting, I uh, I had always listened to <clears throat> atheist podcasts. I didn't really, I didn't really have the the need to go out and search and speak to other atheists because like I was comfortable in what I believed and the way that I thought and I didn't need convincing of it but th- there was one particular podcast named called called Atheist on Air and the host of the show Cash Fierstein in his name he was just so so uh the way that he spoke you you truly when he said that I love you guys you you truly felt like he did Mm-hmm. Like you believed every word that was that that was coming from him as genuine. So he had a, a Facebook group. So I didn't even have a Facebook account at this point. So I opened up uh, my Facebook account and I joined his his uh, Facebook group. And uh, then I met some people and um, a friend of mine was was going to it was the call screener for a live call in podcast. And uh called the Forbidden Fruit Show and they were doing a show on parenting and they wanted me to call in and talk to them about about what it's like parenting a child with severe autism and how do you yeah. discipline or if you even do discipline. So I called in and I spoke to them for about two hours and after the show they were like, You should you should do a podcast mm-hmm. and I hadn't really thought about it at that point. They said, No, you have a lot of things to say and you're an interesting person. So mm-hmm. I started a podcast. It was called the atheist, like as in E H, like how Canadians say A, and uh, yeah, we we're, went- we're gonna get, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into your, but but I think I I wanted to know. I think that's an interesting, you know, story on how you you kind of you kind of got out of, you know, you kind of went your way. You, you, you were in the unknown, you know, mm-hmm. when you got out of uh, of uh, the youth. Um, Well, it was kind of a jail, I guess. Yeah, it's young offenders facility. Yeah, it's young it's, facility. it's maximum it's maximum yeah. security, but it's still and, you know you're you're sixteen, seventeen year old. Yeah, and I can imagine you had these thoughts. You know, your 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 father was abusive, and your sister died, and I can just imagine being in that mindset. When, when, you know, yeah, when 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 you're actually when you're when you've been pounded on for so long with so many different things you learn to build defenses against stuff like that mental you, defenses you, mental defenses you learn to be able to push things to the back of your head mm-hmm. and to not think about them yeah right right all right once again we're here with david edwards he's an entrepreneur and a podcaster of wayward eighth of the wayward atheist podcast you can find him at waywardatheist.com wayward is w-a-y-w-a-r-d atheist.com and by the way guys right before continuing this conversation if you have a passion you know something that fuels your curiosity well on top of getting fascinating interviews such as this one straight to your inbox when you subscribe to our free creative magic community you will get super cool exclusive gifts in return such as the ebook Happiness Quotes by the Ambassador of Happiness herself, Maura Sweeney, one of our hosts, and also an exclusive conversation with two of my favorite people, Alex Okoroji and the blind blogger Max Ivy, another one of our hosts, as we talk about the influence of friends and college education on our lives, the competitiveness in a crowded field, 
the importance of business and financial education and arts and entrepreneurship and more. And also, Alex has a special gift for you inside. I promise you will get inspired and entertained. Subscribe for free at frederickbuy.com. That's Frederick with a C. Buy like bye dot com. Okay, so um, now you moved on and, and you'll, you listen to that podcast and yes. you know, they say, hey, uh, man, you should have a podcast and you have something yeah. to say. And you started you started it. You started, uh, you mentioned the Atheist Podcast. Well, yeah. how, did, how did your current podcast come about? Uh, so I started it and uh, I had no, we had no idea what we were doing. It was me and me and two other, other people. We, I, we didn't really research how to do it. I, uh, I had a few topics that we wanted to talk about. Oh, sorry. My computer is dinging out. Sorry, no um, so we had a few topics that we were going to talk about. And um, uh, one of the topics was um, how, it's actually left-minded people that are more patriotic than right-minded people. Um, I I truly believe that because left-minded people tend to love everybody in their country. And I think being patriotic is about loving the people in your country, not the land. You know, it's, it's about the people, your neighbors, um, your rights, your privileges, things of that nature but it just fell flat because i didn't research the topic i didn't formulate my my argument properly and so it was just it was a mess we had a few beers and it just kind of but it felt good it felt good to do it you know so we we came back the next the next week and the next week was the very beginning of the gop the republican party um nomination race so we just ran with that and made fun of Trump and and uh, everybody else that was in in the race. And that podcast, the audio was terrible, the <laughs> editing wasn't that great, and it lasted for maybe you know eight months or so. And then um, you know people move on; they want to do other things. So we started, and, and then I started the next podcast, but you know did my research, listened to podcasts on how to do podcasting. Um, I do in, in the end, I, I think that, um, and unless you want to be a professional, professional broadcaster, then, you know, you really need to be, be spot on. But for a show like mine, where we're just giving opinions and speaking about topics, it's really ther- therapeutic for me anyways, to be able to, to sit down for two hours on a Friday night after, you know, my work week, my kids are in bed and I get to speak about the things that are bothering me or maybe about the, the way that I feel about the way society is being run. And I think of any topic, even if it's not about the serious nature of my podcast, you want to talk about fishing or whatever, I just think it, it helps people within themselves to be freer of mind and conscience if you're, if you're able to, to formulate a thought present your thought to other people, have them, have them, um, have a, have a thought back. And that's kind of like how you hash out and come up with properly formed opinions. It's my opinion anyways. Oh, you're right. I I think, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I can totally relate when you said you started and, and, you know, the sound was terrible. And when I started, the sound was terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we all kind of start the same way. We all want to do the same I don't know. We all kind of we we know nothing when when we come in and we do our best. And you know, I mean, I listened to some of my stuff in the beginning. I go, ooh, I cringe. You know, even the just the tone of my voice too, and you know, just the whole thing is just. <laughs> oh, that's the worst for me is listening back because yeah, I I have like the most Canadian accent ever. So it's I mean, like I have a French Canadian accent. It's even worse. You're, you're pretty good. No, you're pretty good though. It's it it it's not a it's not a thick. You're you, you're uh, good with. You're a lot better with your English than I am with French. Let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, so now you're doing the podcast, and yeah. um, you're doing it. You you're an atheist. I got I got I got to ask you a bunch of questions about being. Yeah. Atheist. Can Can I t- talk about my my two co-hosts? Can I just? Yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. Of course. So, so we have big black gay Dave. Um, he's obviously black gay and proud of it. So that's how we came up with the nickname for him. Um, 
it's not <laughs> meant to be offensive. He he owns the name, and you know he's a he's a great, kind-hearted person. And we have uh, Ed the Newfie. Obviously, he's from Newfoundland, um, and he's also a great, kind-hearted you know person that that cares about people. Wow, that's and, awesome. I love those yeah. names. <laughs> Ed the yeah. Newfie, that's good. Yeah, well, my nickname on the show is the Great White North. The Great White North. Yeah, because I'm from Thunder Bay, like way up north. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, okay, you you guys are, you know, like, like we said in the beginning, you talk about a bunch of stuff, free speech, you're really about, you know, and one of your uh, uh, recent uh, podcasts was, title was Religious Thinking um, is Destroying Civilization. Yes. Um Talk to us a little bit about about that, and and I think that's a great representation of what an atheist is. First of all, what what is what is an atheist? So how would you define being an atheist? Well, all all an atheist means is that you, you lack a belief in God. That's it. That's the only thing that atheists have in common. You can as as wide of a spectrum that is humanity, you're going to find that in in atheists. They say trying to get atheists. Um, together and to a, agreeing on something is like herding cats because th there is really only one thing that they, that they fundamentally share. And that's a lack of belief in God. Now they're going to have, you're going to have atheists that have a lot in common with each other. You're going to have some that are on the social uh, justice side. You're going to have maybe alt right conservative types. And then you're just going to have the type of atheist that doesn't really care to be involved. Kind of like I was before, Uh, you believe what you want, I'll believe what I want, and we'll just go our our own way. Okay, well, what would be, you say you don't believe in God. What <laughs> would be your definition of God? Well, I don't I don't have a definition of God. That's up to the to the person that believes in it to present the evidence for a definition of God. If you want me to give you the definition of gods that have been presented to me without evidence, I would say look at the Quran, look at the Bible, Look at the Torah and uh, all, all the Wiccan books and everything in between. I myself don't believe in God, so I don't okay. have a definition. So, so basically, okay, but I mean, you, you might not have a definition, but you might have an, an image of what you think these people see or, or define as God, meaning. Well, I go based higher... on their, I go based on their books, right? When it, com when it comes to, when it comes to, religious people now i'm not talking about spiritual people we can get into that afterwards mm -hmm. well i go based on the, on the way god is described in their books and if you go based on the way god is described in their, their books it's not a very good flattering uh story of of, of a person that's supposed to be all loving well and any uh, other you know i can hear christians scream So yeah, yeah, it's all about love. It's all about love. And, and, and how many times does you know in the Bible? How many times you know Jesus refers to love? And and you know what I mean? Like I, I, I okay. I can, do you, do you, do you want some specific points on what I'm talking about? Yeah. Or yeah, okay. So Leviticus, um, gays are to be killed. You'll be killed if you eat shellfish. These are the the rules. Um, So you're not allowed to wear two different types of cloths or you'll be killed. Uh, no picking up sticks on Sundays, which means no no working, or you'll be killed. Um, if you don't believe, you're going to burn in hell, and that's Jesus. Jesus was the actual... Uh, the hell uh, wasn't brought into the New Testament. So in the New Testament, there's hell. Um, you can look at stories like... Uh, where the young, the, the guy's walking, he's bald, there's four young kids, they start teasing him about his baldness, and God sends in uh, four female bears to eat 40 children. Um, I can't remember the name of the cities, but you can look it up in the Bible, it's in, in the Old Testament. Uh, God sends him in to, to slaughter the Amalekites, I remember the name. So he says, go in there, slaughter the Am Amalekites, kill the men, women, children, and um, If the women are pregnant, cut them from cut the babies from the womb and bash their heads upon the rocks. This is the stuff that's in the Bible. This is the stuff that's in the Bible that Christians don't want you to read. That's why when you go to Sunday Sunday service, they read the lovey dovey part and they mysteriously don't put in in the bad parts. You mentioned um, 
spiritual people mm -hmm. is different for them. What do you mean by that? Well, there's no like first define what define spiritual spirituality for me. What it means to you? Connect, a connection with something higher. So it's a connection define, also with your intuition. Define something higher. You cannot. It's 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 a feeling. It's like asking. It's like asking. Okay, if if you if you taste honey, right? You can write a p. If you want, if you want to define honey, you can you can uh, 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 write a PhD. You know, whatever on honey, you can write a test a, a text on what honey tastes but you never know what honey really tastes until you taste it that okay so sh sure um the reason why it's different from christianity or islam or judaism is that they actually have a definition for their god so would you agree that um you may feel differently about your creative thing that you're talking about than than somebody else like <clears throat> you guys may may imagine it a different way um feel about it a different way or be speaking to something completely different would you agree with that i'm sorry repeat, repeat the question okay I'm not sure so I it, okay so you get a feeling yourself you get a a feeling that there's something else right <clears throat> Would you agree that perhaps somebody else gets a feeling, but it's not necessarily the same feeling as yours? Well, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah. inside them. I'm not, uh, okay. you know, but that's very probable. Yeah. And because you can't describe it and nobody can describe it, I've asked um, people to describe spirituality to me many times. It, it's mm -hmm. just something that's undescribable, I guess. Um, that they're going to imagine it a different way and they're going to think about it in a different way from you because it's up to your mind to make make up what what you're you're feeling it's up to your feelings to to make that up well in christianity and islam and the other things they kind of tell you how to feel about it okay, so, yeah, so I can see and, that. and you have a description of of what these people are of what these deities are supposed to be uh, their their nature and the way that they go around Can can you explain to me the nature of of the I'll call it energy of the energy that that you believe in? The nature, well, you know, I can say love. You know, it's the closest, uh, but I know I cannot. Yeah, and and how do you how do you know that it's love? <sighs> Man, it. How do I know? Wow, <laughs> that's a good question. I, it's a feeling. It, it's it's. It's a it's a wholeness. It's it's feeling connected to everything. It's a pure love. It's not love like infatuation. It's 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 I don't know. It's just a connection to everything. It's just you become one. If you write, you become one with the paper. If if you know, and I don't know, you be, you you turn you get into the present moment. Like yes, one hundred percent present moment. Yes. Okay, so do you, do you not think that that your mind could be doing that? That my mind could be doing that? No. Yeah, I think no. it's deeper than the mind. And you you have you have evidence for this? I can I the only evidence I have is what I experience, and I cannot show evidence of it. Okay, per, and this is not to insult anybody, so I, I'm just giving my opinion. No, 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 no go ahead. Just so personal personal experience is is what we call anecdotal evidence. It's uh, Like, I can't experience what you experience. Mm -hmm. So so we, we can't really use that as evidence because I could easily say to you, I have a pink dragon that lives in my backyard. It's underneath the tree right now, but only I can see it. Prove to me that it's not there. <clears throat> you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so I can. I, I, yeah. You follow the logic. So um, what I, I'm, I, I'm not the type of – I'm – Honestly, I'm not the type of atheist that that is going to want to like. I want you to come to your own um, thought process on your own, as long as as it's not sure. uh, affecting the society that I live in, or 
attacking people that I care about, like LGBT yeah. or, you know, uh, sure, sure. Minor minorities, things yeah. like that. Okay, now, okay, so you know, you know, you you're not a religious person. That that's obvious. You're not a yeah. spiritual person either. No, that, that's obvious. Now, no. how do you explain creativity? How do you explain that words or piece of music can come through somebody and get on a piece of paper, get on a guitar, or you know, somebody, someone's fingers begin to move on the okay. guitar. Okay, how, so. It, how can if, you how do you explain creativity? Well, where does I, it come from? Where does it come from? Okay, so does it come from your mind. A, yes, it, it's a pro, it's a product of, of your mind, and you can actually look up you can actually look up studies. Uh, you can look up videos on YouTube from from scientists that show um, the synapses in your mind that are running and sparking when you're being creative. But let's not forget that. The people that we're speaking about and you yourself and I myself with podcasting, I didn't like I know that I'm not a perfect speaker, but I didn't always speak as clear as I, I do now. And I, I find it a lot easier to formulate my my thoughts when I'm when I'm speaking. But it's been practice. You know, it's not like it's not like all of a sudden um, a guy never played piano before and he jumps on the piano and he's inspired and, and he's playing Mozart. Maybe if something like that happened, I would I would consider I would consider it and they were able to prove that he had never touched a piano before and that that was creativity or uh, an entity flowing through him. But all, all these people have been practicing and putting in their own hard work. And, and I think that talented people are awesome. I think that human beings are awesome. And I think that people that, that practice and hone a talent or hone a skill like a martial art or, or anything that takes a lot of work should be very proud of what they've done. Okay. You mentioned talent. A, where does talent come from? And Practice. B, it's natural. Eh, Practice. No, no, I'm sorry. I don't know. I, well, look. No, no, okay. If there are some people who are talented, I know people, they've never taken a course in painting and drawing and they're able to paint portraits like nobody's business. I can take, I can practice and practice painting portraits and take courses and I'm not going to, I can try to sing. Okay. There are people. How do you explain the voice, a five-year-old, a 10 year old, 15 year old, well, there, 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 natural voice that has to do with singing. The, yeah. That has to do with the esophagus, the singing. And it also has to do with the way that you hear notes. Well, so when I mean, they say, people, I'm sure. hang on, hang on, hang on mm -hmm. one second. Mm -hmm. So when they say people are tone deaf, you actually can be tone deaf. So when when I'm speaking to you or you're speaking to me or or somebody sings, it's actually vibrations in the air that that catch your ears. That's how the ears work. And people that that are naturally good singers or like those opera singers that are, you know, really, really good at singing, they they just pick up the vibrations different than us. Their ears It, it goes into the brain and it just works a little bit better than the rest of us. Yeah, well, I, I can see that, but I can see that that's like <clears throat> that's a definition a scientist would give. Okay. That's the definition. Though. Yeah, th that that's is the, the explanation for it. That's mm -hmm. the that's the explanation that has evidence. We'll put it that way. Now, in your life, you went through a lot of things, a lot of crap. Yeah. And how do you explain that you are where you are today? Hard work. And no, 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 no. How, how, where you are today and your sister is where she is and why were you saved? And you know what I mean? Why do you, why did you keep going? How would you explain it? When you look at the big picture of things. Um, know? yeah, like I said, hard, hard work. I decided to change my life when my sister ended up where she was. I was in, in jail safely away and, uh, It just it took a lot of a lot of my own effort to to change the person that I was and to decide that I didn't want to live that way anymore. And I would never give um, somebody else credit for, for what okay, I've done. So, Maybe my wife. So, my so, wife has helped me a lot. So yeah. it was a coincidence. It was just it just kind of happened, right? What so do you mean you, it was you, a coincidence? You, so well, it's explain a coincidence. the question better. Okay, it's it's a coincidence that. You were in jail while this happened and that and then when you got out of jail, you know, you started to, you know, you kind of led you, you, you kept going. You, you, you are alive. It's basically a well, it, was, it wasn't coincidence. Alive. It was happenstance. 
So coincidence is different than happenstance. Happenstance is it happens regardless of the situation. So I was in jail and that happened. Uh, A coincidence is like something that relates to a situation. Um, My being in jail did not relate to the, to the situation of my sister. I wasn't a prostitute. So I, my, my lifestyle was not as quite as dangerous as hers. I wasn't putting myself in the same type of danger that she was as uh, you know an 18 20 year old um, young woman with putting herself around dangerous intoxicated men okay let's say you take somebody like mozart the guy okay. is blind uh you know but he yep. can and deaf and he can create music yep. the guy can he's deaf can create music. yes um yes natural isn't that isn't that a natural talent i yes i agree there's hard work there's definitely hard work but there are people who are talented musicians yeah so so for singers and and you know they have that gift now if they don't work yeah of course that's like it's useless but if they put their mind if they enhance you know if they take their talent and they just exploit it yeah, that's what you know that, mozart that's when you become Mo- great yes so mozart It was about counting and feeling the vibrations of the piano. That's how he did it. I can't explain it. I'm not a, I'm not a blind deaf guy, so I don't really, I don't have a reference to to work from when, when that. And plus, he's he's long long been gone now. Somebody like Jeff Healy. That's just you know who Jeff Healy is. No, no, he was a he he passed as well, but he was a blind guitarist very famous canadian guitarist made it really big in the u.s and was in movies and all kinds of stuff he's unbelievable guitarist but he was blind so and he had to learn to play but how he would play because he was blind is he'd put it flat on his lap and that's how he played the guitar so he picked at it differently than everybody else and it took a lot of work to get to that point since everything is happenstance or you know how does your life have any meaning What's the meaning of your life? Uh, well, my meaning right now is about my children. That's that's the meaning. That's the meaning for me. The meaning for other people are are. Hang, hang on, mm-hmm. meaning meaning for somebody else is going to be completely different. But as as a nebulous meaning, like how religious people or spiritual people put it, I don't really think there there is other than procreate, drive drive the gene forward. Okay, now does that uh, sound bleak to you? Is that is that no, sad? No, 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 no. But I'm just no because I was thinking. Okay, your children. Mm-hmm. How do you conceive that a woman can get pregnant from a tiny little sperm? To, well, I'm not. To, I, I'm not a. I'm not. I'm not a biologist. No, by, I understand by that. Trade, so, I understand how, that. how can how can how can I conceive it? Well, they there's two there's there's a few driving factors in. in in evolution and sex being one of them. So when a long time ago in the primordial soup, um, Adam split, you get different types of, of sexes and sex is part of the driving factor or they would call it mating. But um, as far as how does, it's not just one little egg when, when a man you know has an orgasm, millions of sperm are shot out. So it's not just one little sperm. There's a million of them that, that are heading to it. And it has to be on the, on the you know, during ovulation and at the right time. If there is no God, can we do what we want? Are we free? Of course not. Of course not. Okay. And, and why not? Because there is Sorry, no Sorry, you broke no up law. there? I said, why not? Because there, there is no, no God. There okay. is no law. There so, is no... So, the, so, so the, so you're living, you live in a society and you don't live inside a vacuum. So you have to think about what's better for the society and better for people around you and, and think about how you would want to be treated by somebody else. So if you, if you have, um, say, uh, a, I'm just going to use this as an example. You have a small tribe of people. There's, you know, a hundred people. And the only way that, that this tribe survives is by having more people so that they can work the fields that that are that are producing the food to you know to make uh, life better for themselves and have 
a better future. We have one tribe member in there that thinks it's a good idea to kill the babies every time they're born. Well, you're you're going to come to a pretty quick conclusion that there's no, no more people are going to be around to till your fields and tend your lawn and and make life better for you. So it, it comes up pretty quickly that you know killing all the babies is not a not good, and that's where our morality comes from. <laughs> Okay. It comes from working with other people and being around other people. Plus, you know, you, if you don't want it happening to you, you probably shouldn't do it to other people. And I actually why? put why if you don't want it happening to you because isn't that karma uh, or something? No, like no, 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 no. Um, as all mammals have empathy, all of them, dogs, cats, people, um, and that again is for when a woman has a baby and a man has a baby, um, you're empathetic to the helplessness of that child. So you don't just leave it behind when it's crying and you're hungry and you want to go hunting. You carry that baby with you because you're empathetic, empathetic to its needs. And that drives the species forward. Well, these are scientific answers. I'm not a scientist though. So yeah. look it what up. Don't take the word for it. What, what happens when we die? Nothing. Nothing. As far as I believe, as far as I believe, but, but I don't know. And that's one thing that, that we should have stressed is I don't believe in a God. I don't know if there's one. There's been no evidence presented to me that shows me that there is because there's a difference in belief and a difference in knowledge. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so, Okay. Without God, where do we get your our morality from? Well, you kind of answered it earlier. I, I kind of just ex I kind of just yeah. explained that. Um, mm. you, you know, I I would say that the the stories that I had kind of touched on that were in the Bible, and not just not just those stories, but others when uh, when the woman is turned to stone for for just peering back at at the city that was in ruin. Um, those aren't exactly moral stories or even in, in the new Testament in Romans, it speaks about killing women that are laying with other women as if they're laying with men. I don't really find those to be moral stories. That's not what I want to teach my children. I want to teach my children to love and respect people for who they are and the way that they're born, not the way that, uh, you know, a book tells them to be or, 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 or a preacher tells them to be. I think if you if you start teaching your children young to respect others, they're going to have a good moral basis when they're older. What if one of your children was going to say, "Hey, Dad, I became a Buddhist or a Christian"? That's a completely up to them. Again, I don't push I don't push my atheism on other people. I just tell them the way that I think. I'll give them the facts as I know them, and I'll tell them what I don't believe, and then it's up to them to make the decision. But we, my, my wife is, is a Christian, a quasi-Christian. Christian. She doesn't go to church too often, but she, she's a believer. We just don't, like our, my one child's four, and the other one, he doesn't have really any communicative uh, skills, so it's not really going to be something that we're going to have to worry about with him. But with our four-year-old, we just don't, we don't talk about it. I don't push my views on him, and she does the same. You know, I, I can't help but think there has to be somewhere <clears throat> in you. No, just that that just that's a very typical. Maybe. That's a very that's a very typical uh, <laughs> typical thing for for somebody that doesn't know a lot of atheists to say. No, there's not. I just that's like me saying there has to be somewhere in you that that you doubt what you're saying isn't true. That what I doubt what I'm saying okay, isn't true. You saying to me that there has to be somewhere in me that says that I that I may believe or that there's something out there is the same is is the exact same thing as me telling you oh. that there's somewhere in there that tells you you're not telling the truth when you say you believe in those things. Mm. It's it's no different. Who are your influences? Who are my influences? Yeah, like Man, you, I have, have a lot of influences. Uh, GSP. You must know who GSP is. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, I did martial arts for a very oh, okay. long time. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, and I, I'm, I love watching UFC and all things combat sports. So, um, so, so, just, so, so when you see, so when you see JSP, 
uh, kissing his his knuckles and looking up the sky and kind of thing. Doesn't bother me. Doesn't no. bother me at all. No, no, okay. it doesn't bother me at all. Um, plus, the the type of um, Christian that GSP you know, is, is a little bit different than the type of Christian that I'm speaking out against. Like this is a person that that in GSP that is heavily into paleontology, understands that the Earth is not six thousand years old. Doesn't want to try to um, implement. Um, uh, creationism in school when evolution is is what's supposed to be being taught you know there's there's different levels to people's theocracy right, right. okay so and christopher hitchens i don't know if you know who he is mm, no he's a great writer and debater uh thinker um what's his name uh the guy who debates the Chopra all, all the time uh richard dawkins yeah <laughs> um i i find like to be honest with you, um, I think so. He gets more shit than he deserves, but I mean, he's not really he's not really my my side of the like. He's very dry, so it's not like I understand he's a really smart man, and I've watched most of his debates, but I haven't read any of his books. It's just not I'm not really into evolutionary biology as my pastime, so it's not something that I would be interested in reading. But he's, it's, you want to see something funny? Mm-hmm. Go on YouTube and watch him read the, the emails that he gets from like really crazy fundamentalist religious people. It's super funny. And it's always yeah, spelt yeah. wrong. And yeah. it's always spelt wrong. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, Dave, yeah, I, here's my point of view. Okay. I truly believe what you're saying in that because w- what you're saying, in my opinion, is a scientific side of things. And okay. I think it definitely has its place. It's there 100%. But I think there's that other side too that, you know, for me, where does creativity come from? Yes, there's the neurons in your head. Da, 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 da. I That's true. But there's higher. There's something higher. There has to be. There has to be. Why does there have but, to be? Because I, there has to be. I, Why? I, there, I, how do words come to people how do stories come to people how do you how do images Through your thoughts so so story people? so hang on stories that that's actually a very easy explanation so before uh humans had the ability to write or knew what writing was or paper or pens they passed on traditions through through storytelling so storytelling is like really really goes far back way way back like you know 60, 75,000 years ago, um, primitive, or you would actually say modern human because primitive would be before um, we evolved into modern humans. But primitive modern human, when we were still, say, tree-dwelling cave dwellers, they would have um, sat around and told stories about the hunt that they had and their traditions, and that's how that's how things were passed on. So storytelling, I, I, I don't really find... Like, for me, I just... I, I get what you're saying and it, it makes sense to me that, that you would that you would feel that way, but I just without without some kind of evidence other than somebody saying I just it, I just feel like it, it it just for somebody that doesn't have that feeling, it, it just it doesn't make sense, right? Or or I can say, you know, there are different people that you know, they've been in near death experiences and you know, or they've been, they had a stroke, and uh, there's a book, The Mind you know of Insight. Do you, and, do you know what DMT is? Uh, no. What is What is DMT? DMT is the most powerful hallucinogen known to man. It's what they do in, it's like ayahuasca trips in, you know, South America where they go in and they do deep spirituality uh, trips. Well, DMT is actually um, flooded in your brain. When you die, DMT is the reason why you dream the way that you do. So let's not forget that a very powerful um, chemical is being released in your brain when you're having those near-death experiences. And also, those are personal experiences. And then, as I said before, they're anecdotal. And because they're a personal experience, there's no evidence behind it. Well, we're going to have to agree to disagree. <laughs> That's fine, man. I... I, I, I oh. I lost my headphones there. Sorry. I, 
I believe I believe in in artists. I believe in creativity. I believe in. There we go. I, I apologize. Yeah, no, no, no. It's okay. I, I lost my head. No problem. We're gonna wrap this up, but I just want to say sure. uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to agree to disagree. I believe in creativity. I believe in in uh, <laughs> you know there that some things can come through a person, and I it's unknown. <clears throat> Nobody knows what it is. Nobody can smell it identify it um but, but it, to my in my opinion it's there along with all the science okay um, stuff too so i I, w- I would say i would say that i believe in creative people and i believe in their creative process and that um if there was something interacting with you there should be some kind of evidence so if something is interacting with the physical world then it would have to interrupt the physical world and you would see signs of evidence. But um, I love you all. Um, I want you to keep doing what you're doing. People are awesome and be creative. All right. His name is David Edwards. He's an entrepreneur. He's the podcast of Wayward Atheist Podcast. And where can we find you, uh, Dave? You can find us on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, you can find me on Facebook at Wayward Atheist Podcast on Facebook. Um, like you said earlier, we have a website, waywardatheistpodcast.com. Um, our Twitter account is Wayward Atheist on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Mm. Or you awesome. could friend me too. You could friend me too on Facebook, just D A V E and then Edwards All from right. Ottawa. Yeah. All right, cool. Cool, Dave. Hey, uh, I enjoyed that conversation, but I think I think we can go even harder and deeper in that conversation. <laughs> I oh, think of we course. Went like, that's a, a, that's a two-hour show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're we still can, we can do it again. We're still polite we, to one. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it again. Like it's not a it's not a problem. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. Yeah, I know. I know. All right, Dave. Thank you very much for. for I hope us. I didn't. I hope I didn't offend you. No, 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 no. Okay, no. That's see, good. see that. See that's the thing. When when we don't know the other person, and we're not sure. Yep. We're afraid to offend them. I, I understand <laughs> that. And the same thing for me. You know. Yeah, so yeah. We kind of stay. You know, but I think if if you get used to the other person, now we're getting can get you. You know. <laughs> you know what's going to happen, right? You know what's going to happen after this is that your listeners are going to message you and say you should have attacked him on yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah. And then when my when my listeners listen to this they're gonna go you should have attacked him more on this you know what i mean yeah 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 it's okay but i but, I didn't think this was about attacking each other i thought this was just about having a conversation yeah of course of yeah. course but it's it, it it creates good show oftentimes when yeah yeah you know, there's sure. a bit of friction <laughs> yeah there is. and we we disagreed on pretty much everything so i think there's enough there <laughs> for them to them to go off of <laughs> Alrighty guys, alrighty, thank you very much for listening to this. It was a special one, yes, the first time on a Frederick Bay show that we got somebody, a contrarian, a contrarian, an atheist. I thought that was interesting, but you know, like I said during the interview, um, I feel that we didn't go as, as far and as hard as we could have gone. We could have gone a little harder, I think, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, by the way, I just want to say that we're looking for new hosts on the Creative Magic Network. And, um, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you are positively oriented, if you're a positively oriented entrepreneur looking to spread your message, we can get your hand. If you're just starting out, if you want to expand your listenership, um, you know, we're looking for new podcasters to, to add to the network. And and also, we're, gi- we're giving a little bit of podcast training for those of you who are kind of shy about, you know, for all you podcast virgins out there. <laughs> we're giving a training to you guys. So it's exciting. It's a si- exciting project. Just go to frederickby.com. That's Frederick with a C, by like bye-bye.com. And uh, click on become a host in the header. And then you can contact us to uh, to know more, to get more information. And also, we'd like to thank those who pledged to our Patreon page. You you are really helpful to this show, and we are grateful for your help. In case you're wondering, Patreon is a simple way for you to, for you to contribute to the network every single month and get super cool, exclusive rewards in return. I promise you'll love the perks. Our Patreon page is at frederickby.com. And click Patreon in the header. The money is used to cover our production costs and editing time. You can contribute for as low as $1. Ain't that cool? 
one dollar. Also, the Creative Magic Store is open, alive, and well. It's Christmas really soon, guys. Christmas. So, hey, T-shirts, mugs, DVDs, recommended reading, a bunch of cool stuff out there, including the F the Starving Artist T-shirt. Yes, F the Starving Artist. Nobody here in, at the Creative Magic believe in, um, you know, starving artists. Only abundant artists exist in the world, right? And also... The Creative Magic Store is designed with meaning. It's meant to inspire you, to tap into you, into your intuition, and add a little bit of magic into your life. This podcast is free every time you download it on iTunes, Stitcher, whatever platform you choose of your choosing. Please go over there, subscribe. It is listener supported. Tell a friend, leave a five star review. It really helps a brother out. And for me, it's around 10 p.m. It's 10 30, 10 27 p.m. right now. I'm getting a little, you know, dizzy, tired and everything. And, I, you know, I just love doing these things. I just, you know, I just enjoy talking to atheists at 10, 10 p.m. in the evening. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's pretty cool. And uh, I want to thank Dave Edwards, Ed, Dave, Dave Edwards. I'm sorry. Once again, pretty cool conversation. And we're probably going to have him on the show once again or, you know, eventually. Cool dude. Cool guy. But I, we agreed to disagree. Yes, people. With this, stay safe and don't forget, live with purpose, passion, fire, and uh, love. Thank you for listening to the Frederick Bai Show. For more information, go to FrederickBai.com. That's Frederick with a C, Bai like bye bye.com. Bye.